Welcome to the first in a mini-series of what was supposed to be two videos that expanded into three videos, that expanded into four videos on streetcar systems. So I'm going to give you a brief table of contents to just kind of show you what the four videos, hopefully that doesn't expand into more videos, but it probably will. But let's talk about what those are going to basically cover. This video is going to be the first generation streetcar systems. I'll explain exactly what that means in better detail later. The second video will be the second generation streetcar systems. This is US focused, by the way. The third video will be how to design a decent modern streetcar system. And the fourth video will be deeper analysis into all existing streetcar systems and how to improve them. Well, like I said, this video is going to be pretty US focused. That's kind of what it's going to be talking about. But it kind of feels weird to not mention Toronto, so let's mention Toronto. They have the largest streetcar system in North America. Uh, by a lot, and is largely unchanged from decades ago. Its layout and series of operations are majority unchanged from a century ago, and I am very jealous as a Portlander. And also this video is focusing on the United States, and us in North America, we call them streetcars. We're we just, we call them streetcars. Everywhere else in the world calls them trams, but it's the exact same thing. It's kind of like how hurricanes, typhoons, and cyclones are all exactly the same thing, but you just call them something different depending on the part of the world it's in. It's the same kind of deal here. Uh, I was talking about streetcars at some point. Uh, let's get back on the rails here and talk about something unfortunate that happened throughout the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. Most large cities had streetcar systems. And pretty much after World War II, the vast majority shut down their streetcar systems because they were already being replaced by buses that could go and drive anywhere. Um, it's unfortunate, but that's kind of what happened. Some systems did not fully die off, uh, as I'm going to talk about in this video, but many, uh, most did, including a quite extensive one in Portland that had up to close to 40 streetcar lines in its peak. Some of these cities converted their old streetcars into light rail systems around the 80s or so. Those will count in this video. I'm going to be talking about remnants and old streetcar systems that are still around today in the United States. It may surprise you that there are quite a few systems that are still operational and fairly largely unchanged from back in the old days. It's just the systems have shrunk dramatically from their peak. But it's nice to see them still around. So let's get into what we call the first generation systems. Systems that survived the murder of the streetcar throughout the previous decades. There are seven such cities in the US with these systems, with a total of ten systems. Although we're kind of cheating a bit with San Francisco, we'll, we'll get there when we get there. So let's start with Boston, Massachusetts. Boston's got a decent subway system, but that's not what we're talking about here. They also have a small-ish, although not really, light rail network, the Green Line. So there's a main line stretch that all portions of the Green Line use. It's like a main line. But then they branch into four individual lines labeled B, C, D, and E. And in fact, if you hold your arm like this, you can kind of get an idea of how it works. The main branch here, and then B, C, D, and E. And that's how the lines go. There are also several underground stretches of this mini network, including the portions on that main line, which opened in 1897. This system has been converted to light rail, has a system length of 22.6 miles, 
and trains run at a frequency of every 7 to 10 minutes per branch. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of trains. There's a second line in Boston as well that we must talk about called the Ashmont Mattapan Trolley, which I probably butchered the pronunciation of. And yes, this is an old streetcar system. That's still an old streetcar system. Yeah, streetcar, trolley, same thing. Nowadays, if it uses trolley poles, kind of like a trolley bus, poles that actually touch the wire, we'd be more likely to call that a trolley. But if it uses a pantograph like a modern rail vehicle, we'd be more likely to call that a streetcar. No set in stone rules here though. <laughs> anyway, the Mattapan high speed trolley opened in 1929 and uses old but updated PCC streetcars. It's kind of a lifelong goal for me to ride a PCC streetcar. These have always been my favorite. Um, and the fact that they still use these is pretty amazing. It's only 2.6 miles long, but it runs entirely separate from roads. It does not run in mixed traffic or anything. It has its own right-of-way, which is part of where the high-speed line name comes from. That was, that's an old name. It also runs every six to eight minutes all day long. And next city, Cleveland, Ohio. It's kind of funny talking about other cities while wearing a Portland shirt, but whatever. Just, just ignore that. Um, Cleveland, Ohio also has a red line subway. We're not talking about that. That was, that's a different thing. We will be talking about the blue and green line trains as those were once portions of streetcar lines. And once again, these were converted into light rail lines around 1980 and run today with a system length of 15.3 miles. And each line operates every 30 minutes. You heard that right every 30 minutes. That is unfortunate and honestly unacceptable in this day. Even running at double that frequency every 15 minutes is just barely acceptable. Something to work on there, Cleveland. And the system opened in 1913. Newark, New Jersey. Time to talk about the Northeast United States. Yeah, I'm actually quite jealous of New Jersey's transit, as well as pretty much all of the northeast of the United States. Amtrak just is better up there. Transit is just better over there. The Newark light rail, what we'll be talking about here, is kind of a weird line. It uses some old sections, also runs underground quite a bit. This was also converted to light rail. There are two lines here and have a total system length of seven miles. It originally opened in 1935 and today runs trains every 10 to 30 minutes. New Orleans, Louisiana. This system is kinda special. It's old. How old? 1835. This is the oldest continuously operating street railway line in the world. This would be the St. Charles Line. However, the whole system consists of four lines at 22.3 miles. The St. Charles Line, which is the line that I find the most interesting as it's literally almost 200 years old, runs every 12 to 15 minutes. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This is quite an interesting system, but it also runs a lot of old-style operations. Now, SEPTA calls these trolleys, not streetcars. The reason is because they still use trolley poles to touch the overhead wires. There are actually two different types of operations that use these sort of vehicles. We'll get to that. But let's start with the subway surface trolley lines. Let that name sink in. Subway surface trolley lines. Yeah, they run underneath the city center, underneath, I believe, Market Street. Just simple, small streetcars that serve several stations underneath the city and connect with the subway lines 
at City Hall. It's a very major transfer point under City Hall. Now west of the city, these five lines eventually resurface and go along their own branches. The system length for these is 19.8 miles long and it originally opened in 1906. Amazingly, these run every five to ten minutes and they have line numbers of 10, 11, 13, 34, and 36. But you can't talk about trolleys in Philadelphia without mentioning lines 101 and 102. These are kind of weird too. It's technically a light rail system with slightly different train cars that have a pantograph to touch an overhead catenary wire, and I believe they travel faster. But it is still kind of streetcar-ish, but not really. They're quite different. It's also got lots of dedicated right-of-ways and basically cuts right through people's backyards. It's really weird. And it also opened in 1906 and has a system length of 11.9 miles. The frequency is a bit worse with the trains operating every 15 to 30 minutes, but these are not really that close to Philadelphia. They're quite a bit further toward Media. I think there's literally a city named Media. It's closer to that area, much further west from the city center. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Now, I'm a bit confused on this whole sort of thing, because to me it seems like most of the line is grade separated and not really a streetcar, except for a pretty short stretch of the red line. It originally opened in 1904 and was converted to light rail in 1984. The system length is 26.2 miles. There are two lines and they run every 10 to 30 minutes. And like I said, large areas of grade separation here, including large stretches of underground. I'm not sure what part of this is original other than the short stretch uh, on the red line. Kind of mysterious. San Francisco, California. It's Muni Metro time. Now this system is also really weird. Some people call it a streetcar, some people call it light rail, and both are technically correct. It's an old streetcar system that uses two car light rail vehicles and runs underneath a tunnel in city center. But the rest of it behaves very much like an old streetcar system from a century ago. So what do you call it? Wikipedia, such an excellent source, just says hybrid streetcar and light rail. Under normal conditions, there are six lines plus a shuttle line that all run into a tunnel that was constructed under downtown San Francisco that opened in 1980. The original streetcar lines here opened in 1917 Today's system length is 35.7 miles, and the trains run every 8 to 15 minutes, each line. Just a note though, if you do want to ride all the Muni Metro lines, the L line to San Francisco Zoo is closed until 2024 and is being replaced by buses for the meantime. And also the 3rd Street line, the T line, is somehow being combined with the K line, so now it's called the KT line. So yeah, once we get back to normal conditions, then it'll be 6 lines plus a shuttle line that runs in the tunnel only. I think. And there's another system, the cable cars. Yeah, not really street cars. Kind of cheating here. But it's the last fully manually operated cable car line in the world. What other list is this going to be a part of? There are three lines and the original system opened in 1878. It originally had more lines but we still have three left. System length is 5.2 miles and they run every 7 to 15 minutes. Again, these are cable cars, not street cars. There is a difference. See, San Francisco has notoriously steep streets. So, how do you solve that? Well, take a set of train tracks, cut a slot all the way down the middle of the trackway, the whole length of the line, and add a 
wire down there that's continuously moving. The wire just continuously moves. Then, when you build the train cars, build it so that you can reach into that slot and slowly clasp around that moving wire to pull the train. The whole train is being pulled on that wire. And now you have a cable car. And these work excellently up hills. Is that a word? <laughs> this is an icon of San Francisco, a huge tourist attraction. I absolutely want to do these myself. Uh, go on one, or two, or twenty. They're an icon. They're not going anywhere. And with that, join me in part two next week where we will talk about the second generation systems that have been built within this millennium. I'll see you then.